This episode of the 40 Thrive Podcast is brought to you by my Find Your Voice Through Podcasting program. That's right, I'm finalizing my latest podcast launch program, the last of 2019, and I invite you to come along with me. If you're not familiar, I take a small group of people through a hands-on, high-touch podcast launch program that will have you up and running your podcast with my expert advice, passion, and step-by-step support the whole way. I've only got a few spots left. This is the last group of 2019 and the last time you'll see 2019 prices. So email me now, hello at 40thrive.com to apply today. Stop talking about it. It's time to take action. You're listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougall. Welcome back to another episode of the 40 Thrive Podcast. If you're looking to feel better, sleep better, and decrease the negative effects of perimenopause or menopause, today's episode is for you. I recently went beach camping with my girlfriends and conversations that used to be about current events, kids, and our love lives were more about the ailments and the awesome side effects we're feeling as we move through our 40s and 50s. So if you're someone who's also suffering with stress, aches and pains, night sweats, insomnia, hot flashes, all those sexy things, you might be surprised to know more and more people are turning to cannabis to help combat these symptoms. While for many of us who aren't familiar with cannabis, it feels like the industry has just moved into the fast lane and taken off, but the benefits it provides and the quality of life it can give back is absolutely nothing new. On today's episode, I talk with Aliza Sherman, CEO of Elementa, a global women's wellness network with a focus on cannabis and CBD. Aliza is the author of 12 books, including Cannabis and CBD for Health and Wellness, an essential guide for using nature's medicine to relieve stress, anxiety, chronic pain, inflammation, and more. Now, I learned a lot during this conversation with Aliza about cannabis and discovered most of what I thought I knew was absolute rubbish. Aliza tackles some pretty big myths I think you'll find interesting and maybe even help you on the road to feeling rested, relaxed, and recharged. So let's jump right into my conversation with Aliza Sherman. Let's talk about cannabis for a second because I think especially in many women over 40, you think about pot, marijuana as like, you know, that van, you open it up and there's like this puff of smoke that comes out and like stoners. (laughs) Chichen Chong. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Basically. But, you know, cannabis and CBD have been used now in health and wellness, you know, and it's just, I feel like it's just starting to hit the mainstream. I mean, it's legal in many states and, you know, so you created this book, along with a doctor, can you tell me how you used cannabis in your own life and how you really want other women to see the use of cannabis? Yeah, of course. I, I have to first say that cannabis has been used for centuries, for centuries, by especially by women and by women who are healers, midwives. So it it's just coming back to us. It's coming back to women. But women held this plant in high regard from ancient times, and women have cared for themselves and each other and their loved ones using cannabis for so many centuries. And so the fact that in our more modern day, it was vilified and criminalized and categorized as a drug on the same level as cocaine or heroin, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, that's nightmarishly ridiculous on every possible level. And it was all about greed and it was all about power grabbing and it was all about politics. It had nothing to do with the plant itself, what it could or could not do. So that leads me to my own fear and the stigma that I had ingrained in me. I mean, I was the girl who had the science project Close Encounters of the Worst Kind, which was all about marijuana as a gateway drug to heroin because that is exactly what we were told and we believed it. It's funny because if you actually think about it, it's probably better. Well, it is better for you than drinking alcohol. And Much yet, better. 
and yet we vilify it. Like we, we think it's the worst thing ever. So tell me more about that project and, and your evolution. <laughs> it is a medicinal plant. And that's what we all have to reframe our thinking. And I still have to. So when, when I was suffering from chronic pain, uh, arthritis in my neck because of my technology use, and when I was suffering from insomnia, from menopause, and even night sweats from the red wine that I love to have, uh, with my dinner. Mm -hmm. it, it was exacerbating the tannins in red wine it will exacerbate night sweats for some women and hot flashes for others. So here I was suffering and I did not want to take opioids for pain. I did not want to take hormone replacement therapy. So what was I to do? Well, in the process of learning about the cannabis industry that was just barely emerging at that time, I began researching it as the plant and discovered that everything I had learned in grade school was absolutely incorrect. And from there, I decided to try it, to try it for health reasons. And I sought the advice of other women. And that was amazing because I trusted these women and I knew that they weren't going to steer me wrong and I wasn't going to be in any danger. And it worked for me. It helped me sleep. It removed the pain. It really broke that cycle because anyone who has chronic pain knows you've got to break that pain cycle in order to begin healing. You can't heal if you're constantly in pain. Right. So you, you, you don't want to mask it. You want to create something that can remove that pain intensity so that your body can then settle and really work on the healing. So that, that's, that's what worked for me. And Waking up after a good night's sleep and not feeling groggy was like a miracle for me. Anyone who has problems sleeping knows that really good sleep is miraculous. And I just wanted everyone to know about it. I just wanted to shout it from the rooftops. And because I knew that so many of my girlfriends were suffering from the exact same thing, I thought, well, let's focus on women. I've done this before. I know what this is like. I know how to bring women together to teach one another. And so that's how my personal experience turned into the business called Elementa. I mean, I just, I couldn't keep it to myself. It was just too important. And the thing is, as a writer and as a journalist, it just pisses me off when I see fake information out there. Right. I just, oh, and just, it's right now the vaping issues that are going on and they're blaming THC. It's the additives in black market products. So here this industry is working so hard to go through the testing and the regulations and, and to comply and to create healthful products. And then something like this happens because some bad apples are putting the wrong things into the products and people are getting very, very sick and dying. It feeds right into the fear mongering and the misinformation. Well, exactly. And I think that allows people to go, oh, well, see, it's the pot. It's not mm -hmm. good for you. And so, I mean, in your, just even in the title of your book, you can relieve stress, anxiety, chronic pain, inflammation. What's the difference between THC and CBD? And when do we know which one to use? Well, I think that more important thing to know is that cannabis as a plant has a lot of varieties, a lot of variations. And the CBD that is legal at the moment in our country is derived from what some people call the sister plant or the cousin plant to cannabis sativa. But ultimately, it's, it's the same plant. It's just a variety of the plant that has very low to no THC. It's also called a low resin plant, by the way. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a distinction that a mm -hmm. botanist would know. And that can be rich in CBD. And CBD and THC are only two of over a hundred chemical compounds called phytocannabinoids or cannabinoids. So all plants have chemical compounds inside them. So when we think of herbal plants and medicinal aromatherapy, when you think of echinacea, for example, echinacea has phytocannabinoids, not the exact same ones as cannabis, but cannabis has over a hundred. Most plants have just a few. Wow. So cannabis is like a super plant or even a super food. It just is very, very rich in a variety of cannabinoids. We just hear about THC and CBD all the time, but you're going to hear about CBN, which is a sedative 
and it can also help with a lot of different other things. It's a little bit of analgesic. I believe it's also one of the bone density growth compounds. There's several compounds within cannabis that are being looked at for osteoporosis. Wow. To prevent bone loss or to help with bone growth for healing of bones, broken bones, et cetera. There's also THCV. So you hear about people who they'll smoke a little pot and they get the munchies. Well, there's also a compound called THCV that if you have a strain or a variety, they call it a chemovar is the proper botanist term, of cannabis with THCV is an appetite suppressant. It's also a stimulant to help your brain focus. So they're getting a lot of interesting results from that. So THC and CBD are just two of the alphabet soups of uh, cannabinoids in cannabis. And I mean, I can, I can even talk about the terpenes, which is like aromatherapy in cannabis. Uh, a lot of the aromatherapy that we use today, some of those exact same terpenes that like lavender relaxes us and, and de-stresses us. Well, it has linalool, so does cannabis. Citrus can be very uplifting. Orange, lemon, it has limonene, so does cannabis. I mean, it's just such a, an amazing, just learning about that unto itself, all of a sudden you're like, aha, so this is why it works and also why it works for so many different things. You had asked about women, right? Women over 40, that's, that's our jam here. So the fact is that there is a way for people to feel better. So I hear a lot about CBD and how many women and men benefit from it, whether it's inflammation, aches and pains, things like that. What kinds of things would you want the added THC or the other things in cannabis outside of the CBD? Because that's oh, the, the mm -hmm. THC is the part that gets you high, right? Right. If you take a lot of it, sure. It can get you high. It is the, as I say, the mind altering or psychotropic part of um, cannabis plant. There are several cannabinoids and things in cannabis that are psychotropic, meaning it alters your perception as opposed to psychoactive, meaning it activates parts of your brain. So CBD is actually psychoactive. It's just not psychotropic. Uh, so that's kind of a misnomer of language that people are mistaking. You don't get high, that sort of super high, euphoric feeling, giddy kind of feeling from CBD. But you had asked also like which do you take and when and why. Right. CBD, CBD is an anti-inflammatory. It's also been found to be an anti-anxiety. So it, CBD alone is not great for sleep, but what it is good for is relaxing the mind, settling down that overactive mind, that anxiousness prior to going to sleep. So some people can't fall asleep. So CBD can be really helpful because it can create uh, some calming effect, some anti-anxiety effect. It doesn't keep you asleep. And a lot of women who are menopausal have trouble staying asleep. And that's right. where THC comes in. So for example, if you want to calm down, get to sleep and stay asleep through the night, so you wake up refreshed, then you want a little bit of THC in there. The, the plant itself has all of these different chemical compounds and different percentages of the compounds depending on that strain or that variety of the plant. And each one has its own properties that it can help with. THC and CBD work together, but in a way they also work a little bit against each other. So for example, CBD works so much better if there's a little bit of THC. THC sort of opens the receptors. T um, CBD does not bind to the receptors, and it, but it does modify things. So if you're way too high with THC, you could take CBD and it brings that high down almost instantaneously. It helps really? modulate it. Yeah. This is one of those things, having a little bottle of CBD on hand, if you're going to start trying to see if THC is going to help you with some things, THC is a much more powerful analgesic. So THC is really more of the one that addresses pain, whereas CBD addresses inflammation. So if your pain is related to inflammation, it could be quite helpful, but it doesn't remove pain or doesn't address pain. THC does. Right. So you begin to see that complementary uh, cannabinoids, they, they kind of work together. Um, and then so, same thing with CBN. 
taking CBN by itself could be helpful as a sedative, but taking it with some CBD, it takes away the edge of the anxiety and then it helps you sleep. So that's why pulling it all apart and isolating the cannabinoids is interesting and can prove helpful to some people and is helpful when you're dosing, if there's a lot more accuracy, but really this is plant medicine and taking the whole thing together, uh, just being mindful of the THC portion is the way to go. Right. And there are so many products out there now. I mean, I think when a lot of people, at least for me, up until a year ago, when I would think of pot, it'd be like, oh, the people who are rolling a joint or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when somebody, say, smokes pot in that traditional way, is there a balance of CBD there or is that just the T8? Like, how does, how does that work? Well, it's just, it's based on the plant. So plants are being cultivated now with a lot more attention to what's in them. So we, we've forever with farming and all have, and gardening, we've adjusted plants and pulled seeds and tried to get the best qualities. They do the same thing with cannabis. So some of the cannabis plants come out with very low CBD because back in the 70s and 80s, they wanted a high yield, high THC plant. They wanted to grow it as fast as they could with as much THC because people just wanted to get high. Nobody was right. talking about health and wellness. These days, they're trying to get more CBD in there. So you have to get the seeds and you've really got to work at getting the right plants to have more CBD. So when you're smoking, it just really depends on what you're smoking. And does it have high CBD? Does it have THCV? There is a strain called Doug's Varin. It's the highest THC strain, I believe, out there. Mm -hmm. And there's a company that is purely cultivating the Doug's Varin strain and is now extracting THCV and selling that to the companies that are now manufacturing the products for focus and alertness or for appetite suppression. So it really depends. You've got to know the chemical makeup. When you're in a legal state, they, are, they have to do testing, mandatory testing. Those test results are available to any consumer who asks. So when you go into a dispensary and you ask for a strain that's high in CBD, then you can ask to see the test results and compare and look to see and also look at the terpenes. So myrcene could be good for sleep, but myrcene is not recommended for women in menopause. And a lot of the strains out there are much higher in myrcene. Myrcene tends to be a prevalent terpene. You want to avoid that if you're in menopause. Hmm. So those are some of the things in my book. And the book is called Cannabis and CBD for Health and Wellness. And we list CBD, even though that's only one of the this cannabinoids, simply because it's what people are looking for. Right. And some people are looking just for that. You can get just CBD. The greater health benefits, the overall health benefits, and the more effective products have even just a little bit of THC and these other cannabinoids in it. Right. And with these products, I mean, they're, the, the amount of the high is pretty limited as far as, I mean, there's governance over this, right? So you know exactly what's in each thing. So I know they have you know, gummies and, and chocolates and creams. And do you kind of know what's in it before you, when you go into the dispensary, do, are they knowledgeable? They can sort of direct you in the right way based on what your, uh, what your ailment or what your need is? Well, it depends state to state. Here in Alaska, we have been basically legal or decriminalized since 1975. They do not have medical dispensaries. They just have retail marijuana shops, which are kind of like liquor stores, but marijuana is there instead, or cannabis. Uh, they still call it marijuana up here. And the bud tenders, as the clerks are called, mm -hmm. are not allowed to dispense medical advice. So each state has different rules and regulations of what can and cannot be said. And I would not really recommend that you talk to somebody who's simply a salesperson about your personal health issues. What you need to do is your homework. And if it's menopause that you're suffering from, the symptoms of, you want to look up what would be good for you. So CBD could be quite good, a uh, little tiny bit of THC sort of in a microdosing form. So for example, there's a new product coming out in the market in California called Highland Pantry, 
which is a microdose mint. And there's three different levels of their, these small, small doses. The largest dose is, I believe, nine milligrams of THC to nine milligrams of CBD. And so it's very balanced, that one-to-one -one balance of THC and CBD. But still, mm -hmm. nine milligrams for a lot of people is pretty small. And for a lot of other people is really big, like nine milligrams for me, that's, that's huge. That's like <laughs> fall asleep time. Um, I'm really much more in the maybe 2.5 or less zone and still feel um, better. I, I, I can feel results from something really, really, really low dose. And I think it's attractive to women to take much lower doses. You get the benefits without the high. Uh, we're right. busy. We're busy. We, we want to get the good night's sleep, but we want to wake up and not be groggy. We want to get work done, but we don't want to be stressed out. Exactly. And, you know, we want the benefits, but you're, you're absolutely right. Like we want to be productive. And yeah. so I think that there's that fear sometimes and I've had it, you know, oh, if I do this, I'm going to be sort of, it, it would be like, I wouldn't have, you know, a glass of wine in the middle of the day. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Some people do though. And some people tolerate it very well. The thing that I, I mean, I still enjoy the taste of wine. What I don't enjoy are the night sweats or the headaches and when you think about it, alcohol in general is, is a toxin. It's a poison. And we're just taking just enough to feel a little bit something and hopefully not so much that we end up making ourselves sick. But hang hangovers are the sickness because we have just really consumed something toxic. Cannabis, on the other hand, is not toxic uh, to most healthy adults. You can never say anything, a blanket statement. There are people who seem to be allergic to it. There are people who should not be taking it because it's not going to be advisable for health conditions, such as heart conditions. You really pro should not be using cannabis if you have a heart condition. Um, cannabis can cause heart palpitations. It could slow your heart down. If you have very, very low blood pressure, yeah, it could, it could affect you in a detrimental way where somebody else who's super stressed out, it could be very beneficial for them. Right. So you do have to be careful. It's plant medicine. Again, medicine being the operative word and plant being really important because it's not like something you get off the shelf. Now, a lot of the products are, you're asking about, you know, how do you know what to take or even how much to take? That's the big mm -hmm, question I get. Mm -hmm. And it's very individual. Unfortunately, it's not, hey, take two aspirin and, and your headache is gone. It really is take a little bit, take less than what it says on the label, see how you feel. And then, if you, and then the next day, take a little bit more if you didn't feel anything at all. When you start to feel something that's not what you want to feel, like too high or woozy or dizzy, then back off and then start to calibrate and find your right dose. That's the hard part for people. It's like, right. you know, can't, I can't pull it off the shelf and take a tablet and everything's fine. No, that tablet might be too strong for you. Everybody and everybody's body is different. That makes it a little bit tougher for people. Well, absolutely. And like I said in the disclaimer at the top of the show, you know, if you have any, you should always consult a doctor before yes. jumping into anything. So speaking of doctors, you were, were on a big book tour and this book was actually a partnership with a doctor. Yes, I when I wanted to write a book about this, which I this is my twelfth book, so I, I always want to write a book about whatever I learn. <laughs> it's like it's my favorite way of imparting information and, and getting better knowledge out there. So when I had this book deal, I knew it was important that I partner with a doctor. I am not a medical person. I'm a writer. I'm a communicator. I'm a journalist. I'm very good at taking complex information and making it understandable. So I needed a doctor because this is health and wellness. I knew of this woman, Dr. Junella Chin, who had spoken at some Elementa gatherings in New York City, and I heard great things about her. And I approached her to write with me, and she said yes right away. She, it's been brilliant. I mean, we're working on a proposal for our next book together because it really has been a good partnership. She brings so much knowledge, medical knowledge, her, her, her ability to sift through the research and find credible studies, to analyze the studies. 
I'll find something and I'll say, is this credible? Is this real? Or what does this mean? And she has the knowledge. It's just been brilliant. So that's the great thing about writing with a doctor is the kind of background that she has. Uh, she's treated patients with cannabis for, I think, almost 15 years now. So this is a woman who is very, very knowledgeable. Um, and we put all of our knowledge into that book. On your book tour, because I know you were all over the U.S., was there anything surprising that people would think about cannabis and what you had to educate them on? Well, so many women who would come to see us are, are, are contemporaries and older. So June is younger than I am. I'm in my 50s. And we would get a lot of older women who had the same sort of stigma and fear, or they were boomeranging back, if you will. They, oh yeah, I smoked pot when I was in high school, but I never did it in my 20s, 30s, and 40s. <laughs> and so now they, they're thinking it's something for them. It, we saw a lot of similarities and commonalities. The number one question was dosing. How do I know how much to take? And you know, as I just explained, it's very complicated. And yet, if you are willing to be patient, you can find the right medicine and the right dose for you. Uh, I think another question, it, well, really, women came with their ailments. A lot of them came desperate to, for pain relief. Mm. They, they were looking for personalized advice, and we're on a book tour. We cannot diagnose. We can't, you know, the doctor cannot actually give them personal information for their own medical use. So that's a little bit challenging because so many women are in pain and suffering or their loved one is suffering and they are desperate for help. So there's a, there are a lot of people out there suffering and here is perfectly good, safe medicine and it's still being kept from the hands of so many people. And I think that that's a tough thing. Yeah. And I, I think that we just need to keep having the conversation and keep educating ourselves because like I said, like I, I, came to this where I actually started to do a little bit of research and I wanted to know what I was talking about. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm going to come at this as I think a lot of my listeners do, just with that I'm intrigued and I'm interested. Mm -hmm. And um, I like the idea of having something more natural as far as a remedy goes and not always turning to the medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to make sure that I was just asking, like I'm coming in as a complete newbie. <laughs> And so I think it's really important for us to have these conversations and ask these questions, because the more we know and the more we can discuss with each other, the less scary it will be. Well, that's the whole premise around my company, Elementa. So I co-founded it with two other women, Melissa Pierce and Ashley Kingsley. We're all in our 40s and 50s. We're all moms and moms of younger kids. And we see the, this tremendous need for the conversations to happen. The conversations amongst parents and children, the conversations amongst women, about, amongst women and their doctors, and there's so few conversations still happening. To this day, it's a little bit of curiosity, but there's just not enough of it. And so Elementa brings women together in now 65 cities across North America, women sitting in a room, and some women are experienced with cannabis. There might be some experts there. There may be some brands with products there. And then other women have no idea. And they're walking into it a little scared. And then they meet other women just like them. Somebody else has menopause. Oh my gosh, the night sweats. And then you start talking. And the information exchange is enormous. It's amazing. Just put women in a room to solve a problem and they help each other out. And that's the premise of the company. So these women are meeting each month. And, and I was reading on your website in over 50 cities in the US and, and 65 just, now, 65 so now, to, oh, to, sorry, I have to update that. <laughs> um, just to learn about the health and wellness benefits. And it's not like pot parties or anything. like that. No, no, it's non consumption. It's purely conversation, education and product discovery. So we do on the flip side of our company, you know, on the one side, we're educating women about cannabis and CBD for health and wellness. On the other side, we're educating brands on how to properly market to women. And we're actually a bridge from brands to women. And so a lot of cannabis and CBD companies have a huge challenge of marketing. They're very limited into how they can market. But through Elementa, they can reach women directly. And these are women already interested in learning about that new sleep product or that new product for focus. So they're, they're a perfectly primed set of consumers who we have empowered through better information and education. 
I love that. And the fact that you're vetting some of these companies, I'm sure, for these women and not just bringing anybody forward. Oh, we do. And we make sure somebody on our team has tested something. So we have our cannabis testers. Obviously, each state has their own cannabis testers because we cannot cross state lines and nobody can ship the cannabis. So California being our largest market and most of our sponsors and partners and clients come from California, we have several women in California who can do the testing. Uh, I am one of the CBD testers because you can ship CBD and uh, CBD is a lot harder to test because most of it's not an instantaneous THC usually depending on how you take it in, is a fairly immediate or within an hour or so of feeling the effects. CBD takes, it could take days, it could take weeks. There's very few things that CBD instantly cures. So uh, testing CBD takes a lot longer. Right. And then there's a lot of products out there that have CBD that you don't really know whether it works until you stop taking it. And then you're like, whoa. They're, those oh, are back. Right. Yeah. I noticed that you sell CBD coffee on your website. I'm like, oh, that's intriguing. Yeah. CBD coffee, CBD tea. Uh, I just had some drinks shipped as a new product called Ma, M A. And it is um, a ready to drink herbal teas infused with CBD. And it's got 15 milligrams of CBD, which is actually quite a, an acceptable dose. Uh, but a lot of these products have much less. And so they're not really doing much. They just happen to have some CBD in them. Right. And it's a little bit more marketing ploy. But this tea is, is really nice. There's a focus, a detox, and a relax version. And it's, a, it's available at Vitamin Shop, believe it or not. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so this is what we do. We receive these products. We test them out. We look at them from a woman's perspective too. Do we like how it looks and how the instructions are? Because a lot of these things are so confusing. Does it smell good? Does it taste good? It, there's a lot more than just simply the effectiveness of it because a lot of these products, it takes a long time to see if they're effective. But a really good CBD face oil or face cream could address acne but it doesn't disappear overnight. Right. Otherwise, everyone would be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. This isn't a miracle cure. I mean, it sounds too good to be true a lot of the time. It just happens to be a very rich plant that is and has been used as medicine. And we're just relearning what, what women knew and what what healers knew and what shamans knew and what a lot of, you know, the medicine woman or the medicine man knew that this is just a very potent, effective uh, medicine, medicinal plant. Right. It's a healing plant and we're finally coming back to it. And I just appreciate the conversation. I appreciate all that you're doing. I will link for sure to the book in the show notes, as well as your website. And so I like how you break it down, and then you make it easy to talk about. So I appreciate that. Well, thank you. And I think that that's our gift as women, really. It's connecting to one another through our stories and our experiences. And, and that's how we learn. We learn so much more by hearing a woman saying, well, this is what I tried, and this is how it worked for me. And that's what I like. I like. I like bringing women together so we can share our stories and empower one another and empower ourselves by doing so. I love that. So before we go, I always ask my guests, what does it mean to you to 40 Thrive? Hmm. I think to 40 Thrive is to come into your own, to know who you are, and to pursue the things that bring you the greatest amount of learning and joy. There you go. I love it. That was perfect. Aliza, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I assume you've already subscribed. Awesome. Thank you. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button already. You don't want to have to go searching for the podcast. You hit subscribe and the episodes will just appear like magic in your favorite podcast app. And if you found value in this episode, please share it with a friend. You can share from your favorite podcast app or just go to 40thrive.com forward slash episode 44. Until next time, take care and keep thriving.
Bye.